Welcome to the Register's Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County, and this show is about Plymouth County real estate. Our headline for the month was, Real Estate Sales Keep Pace with 2017, and Plymouth County Real Estate Activity Remains slight, Slightly Down Relative to Mortgages. So welcome to the December show. We're going to be talking about the November activity at the Registry of Deeds. I have two great guests in the second segment of the show. I have uh, Lewis Martins and Olivero Lopes of Remax Synergy. It will be talking about some of our uh, historical uh, events that are that included in our notable land record collection in the third segment. So let's go right to the numbers. So recording at the Registry of Deeds for November saw 916 deeds recorded in November, less than the 971 deeds in October, down 3% from last November. But for the first 11 months in calendar year 18, they're just about even. As far as mortgages goes, it's a different story. Uh, mortgages, because of the rise in interest rates, are still being used to purchase property, but a lot less people are refinancing. There were 15, 1516 mortgages recorded in November, less than the 1734 in October, down 17% compared to last November. And for the first seven, 11 months in the calendar year, we're down 9%. Uh, and again, that is because of rising interest rates and less people refinancing. People are still using mortgages to purchase their property, for the most part. Uh, we've always followed foreclosure issues since the difficulties in 2008, the financial meltdown that occurred across the country and certainly in Plymouth County, but foreclosure numbers are way down. There were only 43 foreclosure deeds throughout Plymouth County. A foreclosure deed is when a lender has taken back the property, usually for failure to pay, in November. Less than the 57 foreclosure deeds in October, 14% higher than the 50 foreclosure deeds last November, but for the first 11 months in calendar year 2018, we're 14% lower than last year. And I know last year was also less than the year before. The next image you're gonna see is of foreclosure notices. Foreclosure notice is when someone finds himself in trouble, they've been missing some payments, and get an order or notice from the lender. And it's something that people really ought to deal with. There was 61 foreclosure notices in November, less than the 82 in October. And many lenders are getting caught up with people that have been delinquent for years. Uh, you're gonna see a listing of foreclosure deeds and notices by community, uh, from Abington all the way to Whitman. The number of foreclosure deeds and notices are less than years before. But in the case of Brockton and Plymouth, for example, they both had 10 uh, foreclosure deeds when people lost their property to lenders. Uh, we've begun the e recording at the Registry of Deeds in Land Court. Our next training room will be January 3rd. We run a free online training session live at the Registry, how to search your records online. Call in advance is limited spacing, 508-830. 9290, ask for Lona Green. And uh, we still have the Rochester Historical Society as a display in our building in Plymouth. And we recently opened a new office in Brockton, a new satellite office, a third location for Brockton Satellite Office since 1994 at 32 Belmont Street, right next to the Superior Courthouse. So my guests on the show coming up, are, again, it is Lewis Martins in Olivero Lopes of Remax Synergy, talking about what's going on in the real estate market in Plymouth County. We'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back to the Registered Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. And this segment of the show is always educational. In nature, we've had surveyors, assessors, commercial real estate brokers, and of course, many realtors, because realtors are the people out on the street uh, working 
what is happening out there in the real estate market. I have two great guests this morning. I have Lewis Martins of Remax Energy. Welcome, Lewis. Thank you for having us. And I have Olivero Lopes of Remax Energy. Welcome, Olivero. Thank you. So thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I had mentioned to you earlier what it is we try to give people a little background on what's going on out there in the real estate community. But first, I think it would be great if you could uh, say how you, how long you've been in the real estate community and how you get into the real estate community, Lewis. Want to start? Or you want Oliver sure, to start? Sure, you can start. Go ahead, Oliver. Um, I started back in 2014 um, as, a, you know, as a, young, a young agent in the um, real estate world. Um, I really wanted to get into it to just to bring Brockton to a better, better place. Um, you know, build and um, rehab homes for families, get them all under one roof. Um, just bring more to the city. Good. So I started uh, my real estate career in uh, 2000 and uh, been quite a journey. Been through a few real estate companies, uh, mostly in Easton, which I thought was surprising. So when it was my turn to open up my own company, I decided why not do it into the city that I sell the houses. Sure. You know, I didn't want to have a company in Stoughton or Easton or anywhere that but Brockton and then <coughs> proclaim to be the Brockton agent where I didn't even want to have my office in Brockton. So I opened up my office on uh, 281 Pleasant Street in Brockton, which was formerly known as the American Red Cross Building. And I, I am a resident in Brockton, so it just made sense for me to have my business in the same city that I live in. So I'm going to ask you a couple times during this show to put out your uh, contact information. Oliver, do you want to start? How people can reach you? Yes, they can reach me um, at, directly on my cell phone at 508-521-4046. Or at my email is um, oliverolopes2 at gmail.com. Um, or at the office uh, at 281 Pleasant Street. Great. Lewis? And you can call me direct uh, at my extension, 508-857-5392, extension 201. And if I'm not in the office, it will ring directly to my cell phone, so you're always able to get a hold of me. Great. So uh, let me start with you, Lewis. How has 2018 gone? We're in the uh, 12th month of the calendar year, and... Uh, certainly been a, a journey for those in real estate over the past year. I would say for 2018, it's been a really good year. Um, as far as the numbers go, we're going to match the same number of sales we did last year. Mm -hmm. And this time of year is actually more surprisingly busier for me than it is during the spring and summer where most people think that the market's the best time to sell. Yeah. And I have more of my sales from October through February. And Olivero, can you... Uh, How's it been from yeah, no, your been, perspective? It's been very well for me, um, for Remax Energy, um, personally. Um, I, I really feel like the end of the year, it, it blooms. It blooms um, a lot more serious buyers out there. People want to get into homes before, you know, the holidays and, and before the end of the year. So it makes, sometimes, sometimes people want to get in the house before the new year, make it a new year's resolution somehow, some way. So at different points over the year, there are a lot of... Um, concerns about the lack of inventory and um, many realtors had expressed that problem to me and it was also a problem for buyers because many times um, they'd go to a property and um, multiple offers and sometimes over the asking price. Have you had that experience this year? We, we've encountered that a lot in the last I would say since 2015, it started for me personally. Um, but I feel like if buyers took their time just a little bit more and, and made better decisions as far as waiting, because you don't have to buy the first house you see, but if they waited a few weeks, they'd get a better deal. Because um, we're finding great deals right now on the market for homes that were passed up because it didn't sell in the first two weeks doesn't mean it's not a good home. It's just maybe there's five more just like it that somebody wants to see and maybe mm -hmm. schedulings didn't you know, um, come together for people. Mm -hmm. But if you just take your time, there's plenty of inventory out there. You really just gotta pick and uh, choose which ones best suit your family. Um, but as far as the inventory, I have no problem with anybody telling me there isn't enough for sale. Okay, and any uh, comments on that, Oliveira? Um, yeah, there's been um, situations where um, families come into open houses and they see a lot, a lot more other families there and they get maybe discouraged or just want to, hey, I want this house, so they'll go 
over the asking price. Mm -hmm. um, there's been plenty of that, but like I said, you, like as a buyer, you want to take your time. You want to get out there and be active, looking at homes each and every day. He's a very good buyer's agent, where he's won a lot of these bidding wars right, right. <laughs> on his end. With the proper terminology, sure. the way you write your offer, it's going to be more... Um, and the way you approach the a listing agent, you know what I mean, how right. you contact them, is all comes into play. Right. If you have a good agent working for you that builds relationship with other agents, because in the end we all have to work together, right. bidding war is never a problem with us, because they would they'd rather work with agents like us from this company or other companies that know how to present offers correctly and close the deal. That's the bottom and line. And like, they say, like they say, communication is key, you know what I mean, no matter who you are. So, so I assume your company represents both buyers and sellers. Yes. yes so let, let's follow up on that. Uh, what should a buyer do, a person looking to buy a home, do to prepare themselves for a purchase of a home? A scheduled appointment. Come okay. into the office. First step is come talk to us. Come talk to us. And uh, we'll, get you, we'll, get you, we'll get you from A to Z, we'll get you ready. One I'll of the things you. that we do differently um, before we rush out to get push somebody into a house, uh, we sit down with them, we pre-qualify them with our in-house lender, um, we check their credit score. If their credit isn't up to par where it needs to be for certain programs, we also offer free credit repair and we help those people get to where they need to be so that they are able to buy that house. And then from there, we, we basically break down what you can afford on paper and what you actually want to pay out of your pocket because they're two different numbers every time. You know, you might be approved up to 500, but you don't want a $500,000 mortgage payment. So we kind of explain that to them and show them and keep them into their comfort zone. And we only look into their comfort zone. So that way when they're going through the process, they know exactly what they're paying for a house before they even go look at it. They know that's in their affordable range. So Olivero, how many, what percent of the people coming in are already pre-approved for a mortgage? Um, it, that's a low percentage. Most yeah. of them are not. Uh, most of them do get, come in and get pre-approved on okay. the spot. Okay, great. So, um, any other tips to buyers to be prepared before they come in and see a realtor? Make sure you have enough money saved. Yeah. Make sure you have all your documentation that you're going to need. You know, pay stubs, bank statements, tax returns, because you're going to need that to submit your loan. Um, and just make sure you know what you want and separate, it from, separate your wants and your needs, because yeah. everybody needs two bedrooms, but everybody wants four. Mm -hmm. So if you can separate the differences of the extra, you should be able to buy a house, and if you can get the extra into that transaction, then it's just a bonus. And if you can figure out like a budget where you want to be every month, as far as your mortgage, taxes, insurance is included, mm -hmm. you know, figure, figure that out with your spouse, you know what I mean, with your family, where you want to be every month. Yeah, because everybody wants to buy a house, so, you still want to go on a vacation. You still want to go out to eat every now and then. Right. You know, so you don't want the house to stop you from living your life. And how many people um, have done the homeowner buyer courses? You know, the training courses. Do you so as far as um, how many people that do th do that in advance? Every single one of our buyers that have purchased a home through us has gone through our little program to start. Okay. Uh, we have 23 agents ready to sit down with any single person that calls us at any time. Um, the only day we're, we don't work is on Sundays, because it's the day of the Lord. So Monday through Saturday, you can come in up until 8, 9 p.m. If that's what is convenient for them, we make it work. And I only live a minute away from the office, so I'm always mm -hmm. in and out of there for the clients. But uh, it's always recommended. Um, we don't like online pre-approvals because a lot of the information is never verified. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always suggest, you know, can we have our guy take a look? You can still use this company. I don't want to say their name on mm -hmm. here, but let us, our guy take a look at it. And if he checks out, everything's okay. You can stay with your person or you can stay with my guy who's local, who's a human being inside of an office that you can actually see and mm -hmm. not a computer screen mm -hmm. that's never going to call you back. Mm -hmm. um, that's the best way I feel like to do business because you're not buying a pair of sneakers that you can return in a week. You're right. buying a house that you're there for 30 years. Right. So let's uh, go to the other side and somebody that wants to sell a house. Uh, what kind of uh, tips or advice do you give to that person when they where to come in and, uh, and what do you do step by step to sign them up and ready to go? So we do a lot of what's called market analysis. People want to know what their house is worth. Uh, one of the biggest things I find is sometimes people wait too long to have us come and they've spent 
$10,000 on a walkway that doesn't bring you any value back in your house. It just looks nice. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to raise your house up $30,000. So I usually tell people, well, have me come over, or anybody in my office for that matter, come over and take a look at your house. And they'll tell you what to do and what not to do so you can maximize your value. Mm -hmm. You know, things that the bank's going to look for, um, like 90% of the buyers go through FHA. You don't want to eliminate those buyers because you didn't chip, you know, paint the chipping paint around your windows and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the necessary repairs that a bank's going to look for that would disqualify them from a mortgage. Those are the number one things we look for to have you repair first before we start doing the little extra things that could bring more value to your home. Because if you have 100 people that are interested in your house and 98 of them are using an FHA product and you, your house is an FHA ready, now you only have two people that are ready for your house. It kind of limits how much... And if they're not interested, you know, you kind of like lose out. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have you have all 100 ready to buy your house because mm -hmm. you only need one in the end to buy it. Right. So. Right. And um, have you had any experience, Olivero, with the Buy Brockton program? You familiar with that at all? No, I'm not familiar with yeah. that. Yeah. I'm familiar with the Brockton Buy Brock program. And I honestly don't understand their guidelines because we've sent people and no one can ever qualify because they make too much money. Okay. They need to raise that limit up so people that actually afford to purchase a house can use the program to purchase the house. Okay. Because uh, I think, I want to say that a family of three, which, you know, husband, wife, and one child, cannot make more than $30,000 in a year. Well, if you're only making $30,000 for three people, how are you going to qualify to buy that house? Sure. You know, they need to raise the limit so people can actually use it. Yeah. Be a good point to bring up to... Some of the lenders. Yeah, we've, we've tried. Yeah. We've tried. Yeah. Yeah. Because clearly there are benefits. There are benefits. They, 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 they pay the they down payment. Yeah. Right. You know, they help with the closing costs. Right. But if you, right. if you can't qualify right. Right. because you make too much money. Right. Hmm. Right. No, I, I, I understand. Yeah. 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 I've, I've heard of other programs um, like that have the um, restriction, income restriction, but I, I never heard of the name. Yeah. Taunton, and, uh, Taunton has one, uh, I believe it's called ProLine. And um, same thing with the income yeah. restrictions. Yeah, income and what restriction, about the yeah. mass housing programs? Are you familiar with those? We do, we do a lot of mass yeah. housing. I, I I don't, don't, um, it really depends on their credit score. You have to have a higher credit score, mm -hmm. 660, mm -hmm. to get into that minimal down payment. Um, but it's worked out well because there's no PMI on that type of loan. Right. Um, there is, really isn't a loan that we haven't done yet. It's just getting the people to qualify. And that's why we stress come in for the free credit repair. You know, because we're going to help you get to whatever program you need to qualify for. Because there are programs like USDA that zip no money down in, in uh, rural areas. Mm -hmm. You know, so and that's a really good program. Yes, it is. And what do you usually need as a percentage down payment for an FHA loan? For an FHA loan, depending on credit score, we have a product through FHA that's no money down. Minimum a 620 credit score. Okay. If you wanted to do a 3.5% down, a 580 is the minimum credit score you okay. can use. So any other tips to potential sellers out there? I know a lot of people uh, have been afraid to sell because they were afraid the inventory was tight and they wouldn't find what they were looking for. That's really uh, just prepping the client. Uh, as long as you're subject to finding suitable housing, you should be able to have enough time to find the next house. And I, I feel like sellers selling are more qualified buyers than a first-time buyer because they've already had a mortgage. They know mm -hmm. what it's, it takes to keep that mortgage. And they're more qualified, especially if you're selling, you have a bigger down payment to put down on the next house. It makes it much easier for the uh, loan to go through. So let's talk about first-time home buyers. I know you're both aware, I'm sure, that the percentage of people owning homes has gone down since the 2008 crisis. And Clearly, the so-called millennials are struggling with student debt and other issues and aren't making the jump into home ownership as fast as their parents or other generations did. Uh, what do you see as uh, a way to help solve uh, get that problem of getting more first-time home buyers into homes? So that's really a, a maturity uh, question, I feel like, because yeah. I bought my first house at 22. Okay. That doesn't happen very often nowadays. Uh, it's usually like 26, 27 now mm -hmm. for buying. Um, we do have a few buyers that are in that 20, 21 range that are looking. I feel like it's just 
them being able to keep their money saved and not overspend is where the problem lies. Because okay. as soon as Black Friday comes and a good deal, the credit right. card's maxed out and right. they don't qualify anymore. A lot of it is. Right. Where, where you're spending your money. Yeah. Right. Right. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, where you see the market going over the, over the next year, starting, you know, within three weeks, we're into 2019. Yeah. And uh, a lot of things going out there in the world, a lot of things happening across the country, and uh, where we're going to be in the early spring. I think what you're going to see is a, a repeat of 2018. Uh, the prices aren't going to go up any higher, and the houses that do go up higher, they're going to sit, and they're going to hurt themselves in the long run, um, because there is more inventory now than there was eight months ago. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like if you price your house right, market it correctly, there's no reason why your house isn't sold within 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been telling a lot of our sellers, um, don't wait until May 1st when everybody else is putting their house on the market May, May 1st. Put yours on in February when there's less inventory and the buyer pool is still big. You know, the buyers have less to choose from in February than they do in May. And they could pass you up. So that could cost you thousands because you wanted to wait till May when everybody else is doing the same thing. So you've both been in the business for a long time, so you've gone through New England winters. Uh, any comments of what you might do differently during a foot of snow compared to where we are right now, Olivero? Um, get a car that has all-wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, no, definitely um, bundle up. Um, hats, gloves, and jackets, some thermal socks maybe. Shovel the walkways for yeah. your realtors so yeah. they can get into the house. Um, um, that was probably... Roof, the, to shovel your, the roof off, the snow off your roof as well. You know, you don't want to damage your so roof. So people can see. Can see. Yeah. 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 Here's the thing where a lot of people don't think about it. They're like, you know, we're going to wait until March to put our house on the market. There's no snow on the ground right now. Take right. the pictures now sure. of the exterior. Yeah, good idea. So that way yeah. when there's a two feet of snow outside, right. The buyers aren't wondering, is there a crack in the foundation? What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Why do they put it on when yeah. the snow's coming? Are they trying to hide something? Well, you got pictures right now where there's nothing outside. You can see everything, and then you can mark it the same. It's the same house, so you're not doing anything wrong. Um, you're just showing it without all the snow everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I was aware of a closing once when somebody had to sign a document that said, yes, there are shrubs and grass under that snow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, yeah. people so that's don't know. A, that's a good point. Yeah, if right. you take the pictures now, you're ready for, if yeah. it does, like a couple of years ago, we had 100 feet. Yeah. yeah. I, I spent sure. that whole month winter. just shoveling snow. I remember that winter. You know, yeah. I didn't show any houses, I just shoveled snow. But, and, but even, you know, somebody could have been doing that last uh, right. summer or right. last spring. I have yeah. a house that's going on the market the first week of January, yeah. and I have the pictures that were done in August. So hmm. one more time, I'll ask you to share your contact information. Why don't you go first, Olivero? Uh, you can reach me directly at my cell phone at 508-521-4046 or at my email at oliverolopes2 at gmail.com and that's spelled O-L-I-V-I-E-R-O-L-O-P-E-S, the number 2 at gmail.com or you can contact the office um, or just walk into the office at 281 Pleasant Street in Brockton. And Lewis? And if you'd like to contact me, all calls are confidential, all emails are confidential. You can email me at lewishelpme at yahoo.com or at my office line, 508-857-5392, extension 201. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having us, John. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Nice to see you. Thank you. So I want to thank Lewis and Olivero for the great job they did describing from their perspective what's happening out there in the real estate community, particularly on the north end of the, of the county here. Um, very knowledgeable. They've been in the business a long time. I appreciate them coming on the show. Uh, we always talk about some of the holidays in, in the month, and clearly in December, De December 2nd was the start of Hanukkah, the 6th was Pearl Harbor Day, and we're coming up to the well-known holiday of Christmas and certainly other celebrations of this season. Um, we're going to show a couple of our notable land records related to the holiday season. Uh, there was a gentleman who lived in... Marshfield by the, by the name of Edward Rowe Snow. He was a well-known author and historian. He wrote over a hundred books, including stories of shipwrecks, storms, and pirates, but he was well known for his promotion of the lighthouses of New England. 
and he was one of the area's flying Santas. Uh, people would go up in small planes and drop off gifts for the children of lighthouse keepers. They weren't as accessible they, at that point in time than they were than they are now. Uh, but Mr. Snow was well known for that um, way of celebrating Christmas with them. He was a dedicated preservationist and lover of the Boston Harbor Islands, and many people cre credit him with saving Fort Warren in the early 1950s. And there is a plaque in his name uh, on George's Island in recognition of his contribution to the islands. Next one we're going to see is uh, a person who operated out of Brant Rock in Marshfield, uh, Reginald Fezzedin. He was involved with the first transatlantic two-way broadcast over the Atlantic Ocean. He was a Canadian-born engineer, uh, and he conducted this um, transatlantic uh, broadcast in 1906 from Brant Rock in Scotland. Later that year on Christmas Eve, uh, he, uh, on property owned by Olive Blackman, radio broadcast history was made. He produced a radio broadcast of Silent Night that was heard as far away as the Caribbean. It was a 420-foot radio tower known as the Fezzedin Tower, which has since been dismantled, but there is a plaque in his honor on the base of that tower over in Brant Rock. He had previously worked for the National Weather Bureau and as chief chemist for Thomas Edison, who did a lot of experimentation in Brockton and Plymouth County. And his achievements have been recognized uh, by many. Last but not least, uh, James Edgar. James Edgar was a department store owner who started dressing up as Santa Claus. He was an immigrant from Scotland, Edinburgh, Scotland, and he opened the department store on Main Street in Brockton. He had previously dressed up as a sea captain, a clown, and others just to kind of have a welcoming feel to the store. But in December of 1890, he dressed up as Santa Claus based on a cartoon by, by cartoonist Thomas Nass. And he did it not to be a commercial attraction, but for the benefit of the children. Within days, trains from as far away as Boston and Providence came to Brockton to see his department store, Santa Claus. It was modeled uh, on that for stores like Macy's and the Macy's Day Parade. And Brockton continues to have a holiday parade, a Christmas parade, that ends with Santa Claus as a plaque on Main Street in his honor across the street from his store. And actually, a city park was named for him uh, in Brockton, James Edgar Park in Playground, uh, because of his generosity to Brockton and the, and the children of Brockton. Uh, and one last notable thing, this month, we are promoting a colonial record. Uh, every month, we promote one of our colony records. At the end of the month, we make it available for people in Plymouth, which is our main site. And it is a document that shows that in 1639, a fellow by the name of John Coombe uh, took out a loan and used a cow to, as a collateral. Cow's name was Bessie. He came from England. And I think that was a very interesting use of collateral for a loan. I want to thank Brockton Cable Access for producing this show. I had a couple of great guests today. We love to tell the history of Plymouth County. This is my 98th show. I want to thank Lorna Green Baker and uh, Christine Richards from her office helping me put this show together and people like Mike Simmons and others here at Brockton Cable Access allow me to produce this show. We burn CDs of the copy of it and send it to all Plymouth County and share with people for what most people is their most valuable asset. We hope you have a great holiday season and Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next month in the new year. Thank you.